What's up my single chats and toxic gamers? Today we're gonna be checking out top 15 best single player games that are short but also fun. Bruh. Something that she would never say but apparently this is going around. So we're gonna check it out, like, share and subscribe and get your toxic gamers out guys. Get, get those keyboards out and let's Of the roll. best single player games you can finish in five hours. Damn, that's all fast. For that matter. Because hella we're fast. starting off with number 15, uh, Portal with RTX. The original Portal that shipped with the orange box back in 2007 is still a classic. One of the all-time- I never got to play this game. Uh, one, if you played it, two, if you did not, because a lot of people say it's very good. I'm great puzzle games. You can finish it in just about three hours. It's short, what? but it's very sweet. And oh, if you got shit. a nice, powerful rig, it's a great benchmark with all the new ray tracing features built in. Three hours? You. Subject name here. Must be three hours? That's hella quick, bro. This is just about the perfect game to add ray tracing. Uh, and what's the next game? Get ready for the next game, boys. The simple environments really pop with everything cranked up to the max. Even if you don't have or don't care about cutting edge graphics, it's Portal. It's still an incredibly good game. But the ray tracing is an easy excuse to jump back into this seminal puzzle game one more time. And number 14 is Resident Evil 3. Um. Some people what? honestly dislike how short Resident Evil 3 Remake is. How nah, long? no way, bro. No way. I thought this game was hours long. Obviously, I never really played it, Bruh. so uh, you know what I mean? But I heard good things about it, bro. I need to get into Resident Evil games. The beat I really says it takes about six hours, uh, but you can clear it pretty easily in under five hours Dang, without really got... trying too hard. For some, the short length is a disappointment, but for others... She, she, got, she got cakes, though. It's a good thing. I love the Resident Bruh. Evil 2 Remake, but the Resident Evil 3 Remake is the one I find myself returning to the most, probably because of its short length. It's just a really fun experience. Yeah, Nemesis isn't quite as terrifying as Mr. X, and the game isn't as innovative. What's your favorite Resident Evil game, in your honest opinion? What is that, or, and also, what is that one Resident Evil game that uh, uh, somebody like me, who never really played Resident Evil games, should start the series off with? Like, tell me that game. Overall, but it's more streamlined, action-oriented gameplay, makes it a smooth experience. Also, of course, it looks great. All these new Resident Evil games have been visual showcases, and this one is mm -hmm, no exception. Mm -hmm. I do Damn. understand that some Damn, people so are disappointed the remake misses some sections from the original game, and also Nemesis doesn't actually appear that. Yeah, I feel like that Resident Evil franchise is the only franchise that does horror very good. Uh, from what I've seen so far, obviously have not played, and also they do their female characters very good too, because all the like all the woke Western devs right now they're like strong, independent, need no man, and they buff the shoulders. They make the shoulders like this wide for all the female players. Like what the actual f, bro? Like make a real damn female, and y'all can make a strong female character. That's not the problem. The problem is y'all make it strong, independent to the point where they don't even look a woman no more, bro. Often. Like the video if you agree. Damn. Oh, damn, that's Thanos right there. That's Thanos? It's probably oh, the shit. most flawed out of the new crop of Resident Evil games, but also, for whatever reason, I keep going back to it a lot. It's a great and short game. And number Holy. 13 is Brothers, A Tale of Two Sons. This Yo, is I wonder if Call of Duty is going to be on the list or not, because the recent Modern Warfare 3 uh, was short, shorter than... Uh, uh, I cannot say that word on Xbox Live Indie is getting a remake soon, so that's all the more reason to talk about it, in my a opinion. Tale of two sons. Made by Joseph Ferris, the guy who went on to make A Way Out and It Takes Two. Uh, this game's sort of the opposite of his later co op centric games. Bruh. It's a single player game with the gimmick that each brother is controlled by a separate stick. It takes a little <laughs> getting used to and. Oh my god! Dog, what? Yo, say you swear to god, bro. Yo, that, that's a genius, genius, genius move though, like right analog for the right brother, left analog for the left brother. <laughs> I, I'm crying right now, bro. I'm and a lot of the challenge right of the game comes from trying to mentally coordinate two characters at once. It's a less polished game, and it could be a huge pain, but Brothers is also made as tightly as they come. You're moving through environments pretty How are you supposed to share a controller? Just think about it for a second and get ready for the next game, but like, think about it for a second, right? Y you got this control. The controller is so small. How? How is another person... Are you supposed to play like this and pretend there's another guy here, right? Are you supposed to play like this here holy how how 
pretty quickly. No single gameplay challenge goes on for too long or feels too difficult. It's just really good. Honestly, it probably served as the blueprint for all of his later games, despite the fact that it's kind of the opposite. Somebody probably said to him, you know what would be great is if this was two player. <laughs> <laughs> it's more of an experience game than a legitimate challenge, which makes the short length work in the game's favor. It's only around three hours. Uh, however, I do miss the time when I could have my friends over. How many of you guys played the older WWE SmackDown vs. Raw games? Because I remember, man, I would have, especially on the PS2 days, uh, and SmackDown vs. Raw 2008 came out on PS3 as well. And that was like one of the best, for the time, best looking WWE game because we had the Blu-ray disc and we had the HD era with PS3 and whatnot, right? Uh, no split screen, full screen, but you can connect multiple controllers and you can have multiple friends of yours in your home and play together. I mean, damn, that those days were, they were amazing, man. I miss the those hours, days, bro. But it's pretty fantastic the whole way through. The controls can be a source of frustration uh, for people who struggle to mentally multitask, but once you get into the right headspace, this one Bumble is Claude. a winner. <laughs> and number 12 is you Alien vs. Predator. Um, I'm cheating. Okay, Alien vs. Predator 2010. You might gotta be throwing them a little like, bit here because this for probably made game. Actually, takes about eight and a half to nine hours to finish, but each individual campaign only takes about three, so I'm just gonna. Eight and, a, eight and a half hours is considered short? Call of Duty would be like, hold my beer, son. Say it bets. It's not one of those types of games where each campaign is meant to be played in sequence or anything. They're all basically standalone games. So yeah, kind of a cheat, but whatever. But do we get to mention this one a whole lot, though? No, we don't. This game lets you play as a colonial marine, an alien, or a predator. Each campaign's completely different, and each playable character has their own mechanics and gameplay. Uh -huh. The colonial marine is exactly what you'd expect, but the alien can do things like climb on walls and leap, wow. and it makes them feel totally different. Uh, wow! Holy! Oh, huh? Predator, however, probably the most fun. Pure power fantasy. They can turn invisible, rip enemies limb from limb, blow guys up with their plasma caster. I mean, there's plenty they can do that's just crazy. You really yeah. feel like a hunter when you're playing as this one. And while oh, I huh? think all three campaigns are fun in their own right, Predator's the standout. Damn. Okay, this. Okay, is this a series or just a standalone game? And number like, 11 is Does it have like part two, part three? Carry on, an indie game that's the reverse of what you normally get in games. Instead of being the human fighting monsters in the secret underground lab, you're the monster trying to get out. You play as this bizarre tentacle blob of meat and teeth. Uh, basically just a no Next. Any of you into games like that? I mean, no no offense. Uh, I don't, I hope nobody gets mad. Uh, this is on the list, so it has to be good, but it's one of the best single player games that it's claimed that you can finish in five hours. Holy. I'm not into games like that. I know there are certain games that can be fun, but how many of you guys are into games like that? Uh, I want to know. We're going to skip it because I know most of my sub base don't care for games like that. Uh, have some fun sadly, without sadly. the gimmick getting too stale or the environment getting too repetitive. This is one of the more interesting indies of the last few years, and if you haven't played it, you really should. Oh, snap. And number what? 10 is Titanfall 2's campaign. Call of Duty campaigns are short. They usually run four to six hours these days, and while the most recent one is... Man... Mm -hmm. And the most recent one, let me hear this. Pretty weak, Modern Warfare 3. They're normally pretty decent. There's a lot of good campaigns in the series I could pick for. Man, the problem is not that you can finish Call of Duty campaigns in five hours. That's like the average length of a Call of Duty campaign, four to six hours, right? If you play on veteran, then it can go up to 10 hours, right? But we're not talking about the veteran. We're talking about the regular difficulty here, right? And the recent Modern Warfare 3, you can finish on on easy difficulty under three hours that is crazy and the, the funniest thing is that it's not even the best campaign there are like six handful of missions that are considered to be good by the community not even my opinion this is what people that actually played the game said because modern warfare 3 is the first call of duty that i did not buy oh, shit. my first call of duty was black ops 1 i always bought call of duty's games <laughs> ever since that came out and i even bought the older games that came out before modern warfare 3 and the problem is not that the game is like less than 
Uh, you, you know, five hours or six hours. Okay, sure. Be make it five hours for an FPS game. That's that's fair in my opinion. Uh, because you got uh, you got co-op. You also got multiplayer. You also got zombies. Yeah, the, the the battle royale as well. B but make it good. Modern Warfare 3 wasn't even good. Uh, I'm talking about the new Modern Warfare 3, not like 2011. For the list, Call of Duty 4 is a classic. So is the sequel, Infinite Warfare, highly regarded as one of the best. I have a soft spot for most of the Black Ops campaigns. I mean, I've even done before you buy for some of them if i remember right uh, but the best call of duty campaign isn't even a call of duty game it's titanfall 2. rather than trying Crazy to be this gritty bro. military story titanfall 2's campaign is all about being fun every level is constructed for maximum i i hope call of duty 2024 is good man i hope they bring call of duty back bro you think it's possible yeah or nay entertainment value the game is always mixing things up and throwing in new situations and scenarios just a roller coaster ride from start to finish how long the beat has it listed as six hours on average but for me i always end up finishing in about four and a half hours it's one of those games <laughs> That's what she said. Is that you can take it slow, but the movement mechanics are just so fun. I'm looking for spots to wall run, backstab guys. Yo, this is insanely similar to Black Ops 3, I remember. It gives me that Skyjack, you know the Hijack map that they remastered uh, in Black Ops? You can't Ops? help but In Black Ops 3 and called it like Hijack because, you know, you are in the air, get it? Bruh. Hijack, you know what I mean? Uh, and and the, the, yeah, bro, I, I remember like Call of Duty. Did Call of Duty copy Titanfall or did Titanfall copy Call of Duty uh, jumping and flying or while running mechanics? I want to know your thoughts as fast on as you can. I like, believe it's I, Call I'm not going to say it's like speed run fast or anything, but I, I'm I usually so. finishing this thing in under five hours it's okay. a fantastically put together campaign and it's a real shame it's never really gotten a follow-up like they're the masters of the call of duty campaign yeah. i mean this is and, and it was made by the og mw2 devs that's uh, uh that's a shame right and, and titanfall 3 had rumors though but i don't think it's coming out the company started by the original founders of infinity ward we're talking about here it doesn't have to be titanfall 3 just give us an apex campaign or something anything at number nine is Cocoon. I think th it's about live service games, and it's it's one of those things, right? When the lion or the tiger, is it the lion or tiger? I'm not sure, Bruh. but you, you'll understand. You will understand the saying. It's like when t the tiger tastes blood, even if he's vegetarian, if you, even if you grow that, or, you know, if you have tiger as a pet. Bruh. And you always gave him vegetables, and you ha you gave him a, ve a non-vegetarian or not? What am I saying? Vegetarian diet. Bruh. Once he tastes blood, then he he will never go back. Let's be real. In the world of short games, you've got your triple A hyper. It's like those one. Of, it's like one of those situations. Once she gets the BBC, she never want to go back to normal. Bruh. Focus yeah, and test exactly, the cinematic yeah. single player modes, and then you got your quiet contemplative indies. Cocoon, definitely the latter, and Cocoon, one yeah. of the best indie puzzlers from 2023. Made by one of the guys behind Inside and Limbo, Cocoon isn't quite as deadly as those games, but it's just about as mysterious. Okay, it's one of those games that drop, it next. It's one of those games that sticks in your mind way longer than its short runtime. And number eight is Vanquish. Ever wonder what Bayonetta would look like as a third-person shooter? Well, that's basically Vanquish. And oh it's my god! Bro, that first scene reminded me of the original God of War games on the PlayStation 2. Oh, shit. And, and you want to know the craziest thing? We're getting rumors that the original God of War games are going to get remastered. That is absolutely insane. I'm a fan of the OG God of War games. How many of you guys played God of War games? Or especially the PS2 on the PS2. Now, now, I'm not against remasters and I'm also not for it. I am I'm 100% for remasters in a Bruh. way when they are quality. And as long as we also get new games, I just, I, I hate the idea of remasters, first of all, being like GTA Trilogy, the defective edition, that wasn't even a remaster, let's be real. And um, I, I hate the idea of them prioritizing nostalgia and remasters over new games, because nowadays new games sucks, sequels suck, but remasters suck even more because they cannot even remaster the game rights. Uh, aside from uh, like Resident Evil games, they are pretty good, that's what I heard. But, but you know what I mean, right? Like, I'm not against remaster. I just hate the idea of them not prioritizing new games and butchering the remasters. Thoughts? 
It's fun as hell. I Back know in the Xbox 360 good, era, third-person shooters were synonymous with slow plotting gameplay. You'd slowly trudge up to cover, remain completely still, hide from the enemies, yeah, maybe hey. pop out to fire a shot or two, but otherwise you just sat there. I mean, I'm not being completely fair about those games, but that oh, was huh. the impression a lot of people had. So when Vanquish came out, it was like a revelation. It's a third-person shooter with cover, uh, but instead of sitting around like a chump, you're rocket boosting all over the place, flipping around, zipping all over the battlefield. It's fast and chaotic. Uh, and it's honestly sometimes a little hard to keep track of what's going on. The game's extremely interesting because all of Platinum's action game sensibilities bleed into it, like giving you a scorecard after Yeah, I wonder what are the top three The enemy encounter, the way the game constantly throws new enemies and bosses. And Next and number is seven Fury. is Furry. The indie action game is unique as it is difficult. Takes classic boss rush type action game popular. Yo, what are these games right now, bro? Yeah. <laughs> what, are, <laughs> what are these games right now, man? Yo, somebody's probably gonna get offended. Guys, listen, if you love this game, let me send you some pieces. By games like Guns Tower Heroes and Alien Soldier, turns it into We're a- We're gonna jump into the next one. Of a good boss fight. Fury has some of the best out there. Okay. And okay. number six is Call of Juarez Gunslinger, only about five oh, hours average. And you'd think this uh, Call of Juarez spinoff would Holy. feel pretty slight with that runtime, but this... Damn, know, that looks like one of the Red Dead Redemption game, though. It manages to pack a lot of game in, in how short it is. Uh, what makes it unique is the framing device. It's a story being told at a saloon, so the whole thing is larger than life and exaggerated. This doesn't just play into the story, it actually affects everything about the game and really... Yo, this is honestly a miracle that Take Two did not strike. Those of you that did not hear the news, apparently Take Two uh, and Rockstar Games, you probably heard that uh, Max Payne One and Two were being remade, right? So Remedy was make it is currently, hopefully they still make it because of what just happened. I'm I'm gonna describe to you. I'm gonna let you know. Remedy is working on Max Payne One and Two remake. Rockstar Games and Take Two they gave them the rights. They were like, okay, make it for us. Okay, we give you the rights. Uh, not necessarily like they get the the entire game rights. They just get the rights for the one and two remake. Uh, and they get the there's another term to describe it, but you get the idea that they're working on it. Just today we heard that. Remedy released their logo, which had the R logo, right? And just picture Rockstar Games logo, it has R, and Remedy, which also has R, and apparently Take Two just strike them. I'm not talking about YouTube copyright strike, I'm talking about a real damn lawsuit. So they have sued them. Oh, shit. And oh, Take Two says that your Remedy logo is very similar to the R that is in Rockstar Games logo. Bruh. It is crazy, and everybody's like, yo, dog, like, you you are letting them work on Max Payne 1 and 2 Remake. Please, for the love of God, don't make them cancel or don't cancel uh, that. And a lot of people are believing they might, actually, because they, co they copy ways, strike. Like, you can literally dodge. As a Linity one second. Bullets when you're about to die. Shooting feels powerful. You're basically a walking tank who's surprisingly fast. Every level mostly consists of pulling away enemies by the dozens with very little effort. Sounds brainless, but it's it's very entertaining. It's done in a way that goes well above and beyond what it sounds okay. like. Love it. The environment love it, love changes. It. Love it. And number five is Inside. The follow-up to Limbo is a masterclass in mystery and mood. The cinematic adventure game immediately throws you in the middle of this bizarre scenario that's never explained. It only gets more bizarre and confusing by the time the end credits hit. It's probably one of the most disorienting action adventure games of all time. You start out as a kid in the woods, and suddenly people are shooting at you, dogs are chasing oh, you, there's mind control. Oh my god! They're shooting on kids! They're shooting puppies right now! What? What? Yo, let me get, let me protect you there. Pow, 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 pow. So what? humans, a giant research facility. It's a wild experience. It's aggressively alienating. It's like they're daring us to understand what's going on or even what we're. That is crazy. They're killing. They're killing kids right there, bro. That's that's crazy. And number four is Mirror's Edge, uh, this first-person parkour game by DICE and EA is unusual for a lot of reasons. What? Uh, for one thing, it's an FPS game from 2008 where you don't have to shoot What's anything. It? It's got a super unique art style that still looks great today. I would say if you took inspiration from Mirror's Edge and 
pulled it back just a bit, you get the art style. From I actually heard about this game a lot. Uh, never really got to play it. How many of you played it, actually? I heard nothing but good things about it, and the fact that it's on the list has to be good, though. The finals. And, oh, yeah, it's also really short. Uh, how long to beat puts the play time for this game at six hours, but that seems pretty generous. If you're just playing the campaign, you can really get in at like two and a half, three hours. Single setting. I mean, I gotta say, at least it's six hours uh, minimum, right? Because nowadays, Call of Duty is like uh, three hours is all you can get. Modern day video games just are absolutely hail right now, bro. Normally, that would be a complaint, but for this game, it really isn't. The parkour controls are excellent. The environments are beautifully designed, varied, really just like balanced in a way that a lot of the time level design really just isn't. It's another one of those games that really encourages speedy play. The story of the game is that you're a runner in the city, so like you should run through this city. It's one of those games I've played through multiple times because yeah, it's really short and also moving around is really okay. satisfying. It's okay. a game you can oh. finish in an afternoon and it's still great. Damn. Now this thing is like, I need a hundred plus hours long game. Yo, how long you think GTA 6 will be? It has that same the finals vibe as well. And when is X and number three is out? Little Nightmares and Little Nightmares 2. Um, I don't know what it is about these games that stand out so much, but as Bruh. far as short games go, these are some of my favorites. The first one can be finished in about three and a half hours, and the sequel is a couple hours. Okay, I'm taking it back. I'm taking it back. Okay, games like that can be fun sometimes. Bruh. It can be. <laughs> guys, 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 listen, man. Come on, come on, come on. It, it can be fun. It can be fun. It's not that it's an indie game, so that's bad. No, 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 it's not that. Longer, can be but fun. they're both can short be enough to qualify for this list and honestly i like them both just about equally so let's mention them both right like inside these games throw you into a disorientingly weird world where something as simple as got a little bit of that little big planet vibe as well whatever, whatever happened to little big planet and what i like about these uh this game specifically is that it's one of those games where you can turn your brain off and just play and chill while you are listening and watching youtube videos or <laughs> watching a movie or, or just watching youtube videos in the background and you can play some like that because i, I miss those days when i could do that right what are you even doing is in question and death comes fast and often. Everything wants you dead in these games and you're gonna get killed a lot, but the checkpoints are pretty plentiful and death is usually only a few seconds of a setback, so okay. you're usually making progress. The monster designs are, are just fantastic in here. They're grotesque and every Brave. encounter with them is scary, fun, and exciting. And the game is always about giving you something new to do. It's never oh. really terrifying or anything. It's not Amnesia Dark Descent, but these games manage to be really creepy with their themes and ideas and I, I like that better, honestly. Not that mm. Amnesia Dark Descent isn't fantastic. I just oh, kind of like the style of this type of thing more. Damn, that shotgun crazy! Holy! Holy! Yeah, finally, finally! This escape, this escape. Damn, that shotgun. And number two is super limited. Uh, honestly, game sounds kind of fun. Okay, what's the name? Super Liminal. Okay. Liminal, an indie puzzle game you don't have to worry about getting horribly murdered in, which is, you know, interesting. But uh, Super Liminal is less of a game and more a series of optical illusions, but damn if they're not impressive. That's the game's entire gimmick. It's about seeing things from a different perspective, literally. Depending how you look at something, it can completely remake the environment. In some ways, it's any any of you into games like that? Uh, it depends, right? Because not everybody's gonna be into it. What's the next one? And then we also have another one. Wait, what? So this one is uh, Sayonara Wild Hearts. Okay, so that's number one. Finally, at number one, it's Sayonara Wild Hearts. An extremely short rhythm game that can be beaten in just an hour and a half, which makes it easy to dismiss as a little throwaway okay. game, but there's a reason so many people praised it back when it- Damn, I was gonna say some negative, but nah, bro, like, okay, games like that can be fun, though. ...came out in 2019. It's oh, a short yeah. game, but it's fantastic. There's an actual honest-to-goodness story here, but like a lot of the games on this list, it's kind of nonsense. Not bad. Not like, bad. everything from the visuals to the music, this is a game about vibes rather than anything specific, a mood yeah. piece, and it pulls that off very, very- yeah, once again, it's like one of those games that you just want to turn your brain off uh, because I'm looking this game from an angle and guys, there's another one. I'm looking this game from an angle of a guy that just want to chill, watch YouTube videos, listen to podcasts, learning and growing and, you know, play some 
something in the background as well. Not bad, but what about the bonus? I'm hyped for the bonus. I'm hyped for the bonus. Couple of bonuses for you. I mean, there's a lot of short games, so here's a lightning round. Just gonna quickly touch on a few that I don't have a lot to say, but it would feel incomplete without mentioning them. First right. off, Metal Gear Solid Rising or Vengeance, duh. This one's oh, slightly too long to just plop on this list like it's nothing, but it's short and it's absolutely amazing. The combat's so smooth and satisfying. The boss- Dog, I gotta go take a piss right now. I have a small bladder, so- Fights are legendary and Bruh. everything about it is utterly bonkers in the best way. Next, Katana Zero, basically Hotline Miami, but a side-scroller with a slightly more coherent plot. Miami? Wait, what? Oh, GK6, the Alamos, the aliens that showed up in Miami. I know it's it's not, but but, but you know, the, the situation has been blowing up recently. Maybe you're watching this video in 2050 and you're like, yo, what? What are you talking about? Yeah, that happened in 2024, dog. Katana Zero is so much fun. The story is legitimately intriguing, too. Okay, about 4.5 hours by Miami, but it's... What's next? What's next? Favor is probably the most recent in the Holy. fully 2D. Oh my God, bro. That's nostalgia overload, bro. Sonic Cannon. Sonic that's Mania is just awesome. Bro. It's a game that just really understands what makes Sonic games fun, uh, which is not just the physics. It's also the incredible level design. And we also did hear about the new uh, Sonic game. Whatever happened to that? And guys, click on this video on the screen. Check this out. We've done an episode on this one as well. We had some of the best fps games that are coming out this year are they actually gonna kill call of duty are they gonna be call of duty killer well find out in this video and i gotta run take a piss right now bro.